All right, so you, Theo, you hold some fairly controversial views, as some would say. Um, so we, we should go down at least a few of these views in which, you know, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know about this, but I believe that you at least have thought about them. So I think it'd be good to talk yes. about. Now, you flippantly yesterday mentioned that you don't like Git rebasing. Now, I'm not one to say F you to a pot of to a to a co-host, but I will say that right now, my friend. Why don't you like rebasing? Tell us why it's wrong, because I think you're wrong, and you're ignorant. So go. Cool. So I'm gonna add one caveat at the beginning of this because I've had this debate enough times, and somebody did convince me of one pretty compelling use case where rebase makes a lot of sense. One public compelling, code. just one. Yes. <sighs> yeah, public code. For public code, especially public code that isn't well versioned, it isn't like strictly like cared for, or people are using like early access versions. Like Svelte Kit's a great example here. Something like Svelte Kit that's too early to be properly versioned in change log. Having a very clean Git history there makes a lot of sense because people are using that like Git history, actually going through it step by step as a tool for keeping up with what changed and what broke. Almost anywhere else, the Git history is going to be too chaotic to be a meaningful resource in that way. The Git history's value is much more so the safety net it represents of true points in history where things worked. The problem with rebase is it's rewriting history. And if you're going to do that, you need a really fucking good reason. And I just have not seen enough good reasons. And generally, when I see people using rebase because they want a clean Git tree, and then they never look at that Git tree. So, so maybe you should explain what it means to have a clean Git work tree and what, what you're saying, because perhaps that is where the confusion is. Because when I hear that, I, I'm not quite sure what you're attempting to mean in it. Because, I mean, my I Git mean, work tree just is filled with this sucks, doesn't work, WTF, you know, standard yeah. commit messages. So what I mean le is less so the messages, more so what each point there represents. So if I go through my history, ideally every step along the way is a state that ex actually existed on a developer's machine. Mm -hmm. When you use something like Git rebase, you're taking the changes you made and reapplying them on top of a different history. And now there's a bunch of states in there that never actually existed on your machine. They're imaginary states that produce a different result. I mm. think that the state of your code should be encoded in your Git history as you work on it as best possible. So if you have an outage or you have an unexpected bug that popped up, you can do things like bisect and actually find the point at which a thing went wrong. Merges are an action. And I think merges should have a commit in your history that represents that action you took to do that merge. Mm -hmm. So, so I, you know, hearing that, I do find it a bit problematic in the sense that, sure, on your state, it was something that worked, but once it starts merging, your state no longer accurately is reflected at that point. Because once you have 15 people committing, it no longer works. Like you don't, you don't get to preserve your, your state at that point. Because if you make a commit day one, a few days later, you make another commit. It's not like it's going to insert it in those places and move everybody forward. The history isn't a linear timed history of the correct order things happened. It's a set of merges. So if I make commit A, you make a commit after that, and then I make a commit after on two different branches, yours merges first. For me to catch up, I need to merge your code into mine, which means that both my commits, commit A and commit C, were true for me, even if commit C didn't include your commit B. Mm -hmm. My experience as a developer was commits A and C on my machine on top of base your experience was just commit B on top of base that now became base. So for me to catch up, I have to merge base back in, which means I had the state of before the merge and after the merge in my history. So then I guess follow-up question would be, what, try to, or at least try to explain this to me. What is the difference between that and say taking your commits, rebasing it on top, you have a new base, and what has been already merged into the repo now has been tested, ran through the loops. It is a point in which is a confirmed time. And with your merged in new point, you have a new place in which needs the testing to be ran. Therefore, I don't know if you're actually getting away from the problem you're describing because you've created a new point in which needs testing. It is no longer your state. It is now a new state that has been merged versus it's been rebased. You don't have that state and the master state has been tested and is the clean state. You kind of miss that little chunk that needs an extra little point that goes, oh, by the way, this happened right here. Instead, it's just gone. Right? It doesn't need to happen. At least that's how I, uh, hmm. 
how I look at it, is that it always provides the best way to test because you're always truly doing the thing you're doing. Because when I merge, I still have to retest, right? Nothing changes. Nothing changes in, nothing changes after, but a lot changed before. And I think that's what we miss here is it's, and this is an experience I've had a lot. Like when I, the, the, the bad experience I had that triggered this strong stance on rebase was a long lived branch. I was running with my team for mod view that had about five or six developers contributing to it regularly in a code base with 500 plus. And we had to rewrite many significant parts of the Twitch code base in order to make them embeddable in our experience. So we would have to merge things into main for that and also be pulling into our feature branch regularly. Mm -hmm. We were trying to do this through rebasing and it was bad for a lot of reasons. There was multiple times where we like lost commits or overrode things that we shouldn't have and had like a rebase that we were confident was good. It turned out it wasn't, and there was no way to go back. You can't go back from a bad rebase once it's pushed because that's an editing of your history. And mm -hmm. that's where my general stance here comes is anytime you're editing your history, you need a really good reason to be doing that. And you need a lot of confidence with it. And I don't think we have that enough. And I do think merge is good enough, especially at large code bases. You're actually one of the first people I've heard say that like large teams need rebase. I found the opposite. Large teams tend to be bigger fans of merge. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 I'm a pretty heavy rebase user. And so is a good portion of the developers that work on the product that I work against. But so I guess the follow -up, the follow-up observation that I kind of made with that is that I've also been on a long running feature branch and we did merges only non-rebase. And I feel like I've ran into all the problems you talk about. My personal opinion is that long running feature branches, no matter what you do, are god awful and they will eventually just cause every problem underneath the sun. And you will find yourself going, I either am force pushing or <laughs> we're going to be missing some stuff at this point because it's impossible. Right. I've, I've never the material had. People are right about some things. It hurts to admit it, but. Yeah. I hate, I, I hate feature branches. Oh my goodness. Those. Like just short lived ones, that's fine. That's barely feature branch. That's a dev branch, but man, long ones are just the worst. All right. So, uh, Bash Bunny from the audience said that can we talk about history? How do we use it? I think I don't know if we use it the same. I like to uh, personally just take a file, find all of its changes if I'm trying to find something that's broken, and just walk up the change set till I find the line that's kind of the offending line or what has changed between the two. Do you, uh, how do you use all that? Because you're kind of, you like these merges, so obviously your history is now going to be filled with significantly more points along the way. What does that look like? Yeah, man, I can't remember the last time I had a bug that I that I needed history for that I knew the file it was in. That's an like like I'm thinking of like a Venn diagram right now. Like the left is bugs that I know the file for, and the right is bugs I need history for. And the overlap in the middle there is just really small for me. Like if I know the file, I can read the file and see the bug 95% of the time. Otherwise, the history is not going to help me find it that much better. And at that point, I'm going to probably need to get bisect or a tool like that to go back to a known point of good history, a known point of bad uh, history, and then back and forth until I land on the right spot. Get bisect is a phenomenal tool. And a lot of my decision making is around making sure it's truthful at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I always find myself running into this problem where it's just like there's five commits and I'm just like, I'm just going to walk backwards and try each one. I always have this problem where it's just like, when does, when does log n actually become useful? And it's just, it's, it just hurts me emotionally because I make the same judgment call every single time where I just think for like three minutes when I could be done already. Ugh. Ugh. But yeah, so you don't actually use that much in history, it sounds like. It sounds like you only bisect your way to the problems and that's that. Yeah, when I'm looking for the history of my code base, I look at recently merged PRs. I don't look at the Git history ever. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I look a lot at history. I like to read the messages, uh, which is one reason why when I'm actually working, I do, so another reason why I rebase is that when I'm done, I will have like five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 commits, and I put them into one and put a proper message. I always rebase all my small commits because, you know, a lot of them are broken state commits. Uh, I just wanted to get, like right now I'm working on just a refactor. I got all the code pulled out of one file into another. You're not a better streamer, by the way. I'm actually doing these two things at the same time as well, friend. Uh, but uh, I, I pulled them all out and I have to put them into a file. I just want to commit at that point, even though I can't even build, right? It's just broken. And so I find that rebasing in that sense also makes searching the log really easy. Because sometimes what will end up happening, especially in a really mature product, is that we will discover a bug and 
you know, it could be a thousand commits before we find, you know, what happened. And it's really easy to be like, okay, this involves widgets. Show me the, you know, show me every commit that has the word widget in it. Oh, it's only three commits. How much do you want to bet it's just this one commit right in here? And then that ends up actually being a very simple way I find to use history is just word searching the problem. It's clear you and your guys don't respect history. They just deleted my message in your chat. So yeah, we rebased you out of the chat. Yeah, I, I, I noticed. Yeah, I'd rather have been merged, but I, I get it. Yeah, well, guess what? Sometimes production sucks, okay? Production's unfair, yep. as they say. How do you know when you've written too many unit tests? If you say none, we're fist fighting.